and it tells the, t the tale of why it took 20 years. And since then, we've become incredibly great friends from Facebook, which is, you know, crazy. And now I carry his work. It's not an exclusive, but I'm the only gallery that has his work. So he lives on, in a schoolhouse in the middle of nowhere in Oregon. Okay. So, and it's just become a, a way of passion of me. And not all the artists in the magazine are in my gallery. It's that it just comes, each one sort of is a birth, each time. Sometimes it's the cover, like the first issue. This had to be that I, I had an art, he's not even doing art anymore, but he was in my gallery. He's a uh, Bart Schultz, he's called the Masking Tape Man. And everything he makes is out of masking tape. And that was the cover. And then I have the, un the underwear, as in my, if she is in my gallery, it's Hannah Fink, she's in Princeton. <coughs> I had to have that as a cover, and as that produced, um, she gave me that piece as a gift, which I will cherish for the rest of my life. The first issue, I found my writers through people. I have editors now, and they're all different places. I have an editor in England. I have an editor and proofer in, in Athens, Georgia. I have one in Eastern Pennsylvania, and I just. I mean, I'll see something, and it takes me, I only do two a year, because now I work nine to five during the week, I have my gallery on the weekends, but it's a great promotional tool, and it's, it's, it pays for itself. A lot of magazines should only do two a year, I mean, honestly. And I put love into it. They're more dear, yeah. And if you want to look through it and have questions. What is this little pin, the nipple thing, what does that mean? That's masking tape. That's what, wow. no, it's, he is, it's so shameful, he will not work, he, he's very depressive, and he goes through this period, he, got only do, he will only deal in antiques, he's still great friends with me, but he won't do art anymore, it's really crazy. What's his name again? Bart Schultz. Bart Schultz. Okay. He's really good, and lucky I have enough pieces that I hide. <laughs> you know, and then I have my little warehouse, I call it, because I also have the Outsider Art Gallery online, and a lot of pieces on there are at home. They're not even in the gallery. So it gets pretty crazy, but it's worth it. How do you distribute the magazine? Two places, Facebook and the gallery. And how do we just physically don't have the capacity. How much is it? The first issue was 30, so it's 30 plus postage. That cost me an arm and a leg because it was printed at the gatefold. Now, with my printer, I got it stabilized to a way affordable thing, so we went down to 20. And But it's, it's such an affordable thing that it easily pays for itself. I lay it all out. I'm a bitch when it comes to design, so I want it all about the art, not about the type, not about, it's all about the picture. There's no index. It's just about the art. So there's four issues so far? Four. They're going to be, the fourth issue will come out this year. Awesome. And it's like, I, I don't torture myself about, there's no due dates. Like people go, I want to, there's no subscription because I don't want, I mean, there's enough pressure trying to run through all this other stuff. But I take, I mean, my writers, I adore them. I don't give direction to writers. I say, just go do a story about this person. This is, they're crazy for this. This is a person. Um, I also try each, each issue. I have a, a heavy love of the A-team, who I represent in the gallery there. Um, the band? Low income housing, people who eat at the soup kitchen in Trenton. And... The entire Trenton Soup Kitchen is a gallery. And each issue I've had one of them, but I now, rep I have their works all through the gallery too. And I become friends with, I mean, I go to the Soup Kitchen, everyone knows me at the Trenton Soup Kitchen, and they're adorable. And when we do a show, every, <coughs> when I do, the last show I did was a post, it's called, it was the I Love Postcard Show. And I invite artists to do the show. They send me the work, scanned in. I always print a book for each show. And this time it was 
a spiral-bound, perforated postcard book. Each artist got a page, sold it for five bucks. My printer gives it up for free because it's, <coughs> it, benefit, it benefited the Trenton Soup Kitchen. Sold it out, and I think I went down there and wrote him a check for 800 bucks. That's, I mean, and believe me, it makes, it's so fulfilling on top of not only having them there, but to go down there and they were like, one of them had knit me a scarf <laughs> and my mohawk hat. I mean, this is, I mean, it's really crazy. It's really crazy. This is my favorite. I love that. Look Very that. nice. Isn't that great? Nice. <laughs> and it just, it's wonderful. And it's just, it's, it's a love fest. Yeah. And I just keep trying to find more ways of promoting it because you still have to be a PR whore. But on the other hand, the artists come first. It's just a weird situation. Does that make sense? And these are my artists. So. What's with the David Hockney one? You didn't. I, did I oh, this was my own. There is one local artist who was introduced to me by friends who are artists, but they're Bucks County painters that paint barns and cows and whatever. But he's an illustrator by profession that lives in my town. And we were introduced, and I adore him. His name is Joseph, Joseph Citarella. And he does work for me. I have, I'm his only gallery. Another one that has never shown his work. He's a, brilliant with line, and he's crazy. And the stuff I have of his, I have, he's obsessed with crazy things. Like he has one piece he did for me is Betty, uh, what was it, Betty Page spanking J. Edgar Hoover in women's lingerie. I mean, crazy. But Isn't that one of the? I think so. Yeah. And then he produced this piece in a print workshop, and but he did a red version for the red stick. <clears throat> for this and behind my back he entered it into Society of Illustrators show in New York and before I knew it in the mail the publisher gets it too because the published work I get a silver medal to the Society of Illustrators for my magazine oh. wow, and I'm like what the fuck <laughs> so it's like Everybody in you know in this situation. Can we see the map? Yeah, sure. I get the first sorry Bob. <laughs> but it's crazy. It just I mean, wow. if you do it with love, it's a whole different story. You have to make the money, but you can do it and and care. I mean, the A team have become such great friends. I didn't know these people. I now know all, I know them. I adore them. I know the one artist I love, he only does dots out of anything he can find. He has, I have a rock painting these dots. I have dots. He did a portrait of himself with his number from prison, because he's been in prison. Then, just recently, he finished a piece for me, and I now buy stuff from him, on just I buy it right out because he got his girlfriend went crazy on him, stabbed him, and missed his heart by an inch. So he has to be on medication all the time. And he's only like 35. So you, you, you do what you can. So it's crazy. And that's my little weird. <laughs> Gallery magazine place in French Town, and I adore it. So, and I adore these people. So, it even I'm makes it coming. I'm coming as soon as I'm free. I'm here, which is in like ten days. Are you open all the time? Only on weekends because I still work nine to five during the week to support my habit. But that right. soon to probably cease because in May last year there's, <coughs> there's, there's an art show, another art fair outside of Paris.